Well, this doesn't happen very often on the tracker. We are talking winter sports. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure you are surprised we are talking winter sports, but every now and then you get the very interesting interview. And this man here has probably defied the odds in a sport that is um, dominated by whites, if I should put it that way. My guest uh, is Kwame Nkrumah Champon. He uh, has been competing at the Winter Olympics since 2010. Uh, we, are, we are about to find out a few interesting things about him, um, how he got there, the challenges, and how he's emerged from all of that as a person. Kwame, it's good to have you on the tracker. Thank you so much. Let's let's first of all begin from who Kwame Nkrumah Champong is because I'm not sure it's a name a lot of Ghanaians are familiar with because we barely ever follow winter sports and that's obvious. Yeah. But who is Kwame? Well, um, I'm, I'm simple, not too complicated. Yeah. Um, I love working, and I've always loved sports. So mm. from my days uh, in secondary school in Cape Coast uh, all the way to UCC, I was a sportsman. Uh, I okay. represented Ghana twice at the all africa west african games for okay. universities which is all okay it's not all african oh, no, games, but all west african, west african games, games yeah. for universities so i did um, a bit of running four by hundred volleyball oh. uh, lawn tennis and all that kind of stuff and then i moved back to uk to study my master's degree okay and then i got into skiing and then mm. it just kind of ballooned on from there into the winter olympics Interesting. Let's 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 take a few steps back. I mean, um, you spoke about being a being an athlete of some sorts in your in your in your student days. At that point, had you ever conceived, I mean, winter sports at any point at all? No, 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 never. I always had a dream that I could make it to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing more of track and field, okay, and playing football. Hmm. So when I went back to UK, I did get an invitation to train for with Chelsea okay. and Fulham, but I chose work instead of. I kid it. You, you need to go back <laughs> on that a, a bit for me. How, how old were you then? I think I was twenty-two or twenty-four. I think. So they offered you a chance at trials. Yes. Yeah, so I, I I kind of walked into Chelsea. Okay. And I went to the front desk and I said I wanted to try out for the team. You're kidding me. Yeah, Just like that. Yeah, because sometimes I always think you have to try something different. And mm -hmm. the lady was like, how old are you? Mm -hmm. I mentioned my age, and she yeah. was like, oh, you're too old for the academy. Mm -hmm. And there was a gentleman standing there, and he just asked me, what country are you from? And I said, from Ghana. He told the lady, give him a, a form. Okay. And they gave me a date, but I didn't go. Oh, interesting. Uh, I was working, so I just could not get the time off. They would not give me the time off. Ah, I mean, how did that feel for you? Didn't that feel like a dream dashed or at least an opportunity that you didn't have a chance to explore? Um, I always say it's one of the worst decisions I made in my life. Because hmm. at that time, I was, I think I was pretty good at, at football. I was pretty good. Wow, 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 wow. That's interesting. Now, let's, let's move on to where you developed your interest in, in winter sports and then how it eventually culminated in you going to the 2010 uh, Winter Olympics. Tell us about that. How, how did that all first even start off? Yeah, I'd, I'd watch people skiing before. Okay. And ski racing, I always saw it, you know, you'll see the, the tracker running the time and the kilometers per hour. And I just thought it was really exciting. So I got a, a, a job in an indoor ski center, started learning how to ski, mm -hmm. did a few indoor competitions, was not too bad. I mean, for a new beginner, mm. I wasn't too bad. And somebody said, why don't you really like enter into the ski racing okay. thing and see what you can do? And then somebody uh, told me that it would be impossible for me to be ever good at it and even compete at a higher Why? level. Did he give you any reasons? The, the thing is, when you're from um, black Africa, yeah. people just believe that some things... Are just not for you. Yes. So I told him that, look, skiing, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. It's just a um, mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And, then, and then from there, how did it progress? Because clearly, if you want to try your hands at this, you need to have at least some level of coaching. You need to have some equipment. You need to and also have like a place to actually practice this yeah. stuff. Tell us about that. Well, um, I went to a ski show in London, and that's where I met my first sponsor. Okay. And the sponsor said, well, if we take you to France, yeah. or if you can get to France, mm -hmm. and we take you onto a real mountain, and we try you out, mm -hmm. and you don't have one fall, yeah. we'll give you a sponsorship deal. So the deal was, I've got to go to the top of Val d'Isere, Okay. And ski all the way down to the bottom mm -hmm. without falling. 
And at, at this point, had you had some practice time on your own? Oh yeah, I'd, I'd been practicing, but I'd never ever been out on a mountain, real mountain. I've been doing this indoor 100 meter kind of thing or less. Mm -hmm. And it was the first big challenge I had how, because... How's, wait, hold on a second. How's the indoor simulation like? Like, what's that like? Um, it's, it's cold. It's real snow made out of water and it's just okay. like frozen ice crystals. But... It's just in an indoor auditorium kind of thing. Yes, okay. and you feel safer because everything is measured. You know, okay. you can see the walls left to right. Yeah. But on a mountain, yeah. there's a drop here, there's yeah. this, there's that. And I, I had to follow a former Winter Olympian down the hill. Okay. So it, basically, I had to match his speed and chase mm, him down. Mm. Interesting. Now, like you said, you, you've been to the skiing show. You've been promised um, a deal if you can... Uh, actually get your stuff going without any errors. How, d how did that go? Uh, it, it went well. Um, I managed to ski all the way down. And, that was uh, the first time on an actual mountain? First time. Wow. And then the chap was asked if he thought I could ever get to the Olympics. And I was like, well, if this is my first time, mm -hmm. with a bit of effort and training, he believes I can do it. And then I got the first ever sponsorship I had. How old were you then? I think then either 25 or so, or 27 so, or so. Um, I, I, I want to believe at this point, unlike the football situation, you had maybe quit your job and decided to go into this full time? Well, I didn't quit my job at that time. I, I, I took um, a period off okay. just to go and do the trial. So when I got back to UK, that is when I had to take the decision. Do you actually go in full on or mm. you sit back and, and you know, try and see if you can work and do it. Yeah. But I decided, you know, quit the job. Yeah. I, I've had one error in sports okay. before where I didn't take a decision. Mm -hmm. So I took this decision. I said, okay, I'm going to quit my job, focus full time, and try and chase sponsorship as well as, you know, training. So mm. that's what I started doing full time. Okay. So now you've got somebody who's convinced that you can actually make a push with this. Um, tell us about possible challenges right i mean for for you yourself at this point is your mind screaming okay i'm going to go to the olympics or is your mind screaming can i really do this like did you have internal challenges did you have external challenges talk to us about that. i say uh, mentally it was a question of can i actually do it hmm. you know it's not like you will do it because getting into the real thing i realized it was really difficult yeah you know the the cold the training the bad snow days, you're outside, the traveling, yeah. uh, especially the funding. So it was a case of, do you think you can do it? Are you willing to put the necessary effort? Yeah. And to get to the Olympics, it's not just about training. Yeah. It's all the other things that go around it, the, the managing yourself, managing yeah. your travel and all that. So those were the challenges. External challenges were people, I mean, the first time I went to a race in France, mm -hmm. I was actually asked when I was at the top, somebody came to one of the racers and said, ah, what are you doing here? I, I said, oh, me too, I'm here to yeah. do it. I said, I should look what is going on. People are crashing and having accidents. Yeah. Am I really sure I want to do that? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm also here to also yeah. try my hands. Mm -hmm. I was the last racer to go because I didn't have any points on the system yeah. or points. So I managed to complete it. And then the same guy came back and shook my hand wow. and said, well done. So you get all those kind of challenges, yeah. I mean, at, the, at this point, have you garnered any self-belief that, okay, I really can go to the Olympics? Did you have to even make a certain time to actually qualify? Yes, you have a qualification mark you have to make. Mm -hmm. But that was so far down the line because I started, I think I had two years okay. before the Olympics were due. Oh. So usually you have a four-year gap mm -hmm. from one Olympics to the other. So, yeah, but I was yeah. somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. and I was like pushing to get the quickly so yeah. it, it was tough it wasn't easy wow now you are basically at the brink of the 2010 winter olympics um what sort of preparation did you get through or when did you even get your confirmation that okay you've made the set, the set criteria you can mm -hmm. compete when did you get that what sort of preparation did you have to actually do to go into the competition itself uh, i got my qualification mark um sent to me after my race in Iran, I went okay. to Iran, did a race in Iran, yeah. got back to UK and the message came that it looks like you've qualified. Mm. So if you want to come to the Olympics, you yeah. see your Olympic um, body in Ghana, mm. let them do all the necessary paperwork. 
Funny enough, the paperwork had already been sent to the Ghana Olympic Committee. Okay. So I had to fly back here. But when I got here, somebody had thrown it away. You're kidding me? Yeah, because... Uh, Winter Olympics. Winter Olympics to... What does he mean? So somebody <laughs> put it somewhere. Wow. So I wrote back the Olympic body that I came and they can't find any other document. So they mm -hmm. told me that, look, we'll send it to you directly. Okay. And you carry it and it get that. everything done. At that time, I had to double up my training. Mm. Because... Um, you know, people have been training for a very long time. They have better training facilities. So I had to do uh, a thing of, if somebody's training for five hours, I have to train for 10 so I can get the extra, yeah. the extra Cut time. Up quicker. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. So now you get clearance from the Ghana Olympic Committee, I'm guessing. It was more from the um, World Olympic. World Olympic. And then yeah. they had to just ratify it more like yeah. Okay, that, that has happened. You are going into the competition. How excited are you? What are your objectives and ambitions? Because you have clearly not been there before. You are going yeah. to compete with guys who have probably won medals and stuff like that. What's your mentality like going there? Is it to compete for, for honors or to just participate and fulfill a dream? Well, I, I, I was asked the same question before the Olympics and I said, the only thing I'm aiming for is I won't be last. Okay. Somebody else has to be last. I don't okay. want to be last. I knew I could not win a medal, impossible, because mm -hmm. some of these guys started training from, from when they were four years yeah. old. Wow. You know, and they, this is their life. They live it. Mm -hmm. I have just learned the lifestyle. You know, sometimes you see people or athletes go to competitions and they freeze. Yeah. It's true because I've gone to a world championship. That was my first major event. Mm -hmm. My friend, I froze. <laughs> <laughs> but that experience... Yeah taught me a lot. Mm. It made me understand how to, I would say, absorb the, the stress and the pressure of the Olympics. Okay. Okay. Because, look, the Olympics to me, getting there was like, you're going for an operation, you don't know if you will die or you what, you survive. Mm. And the day before we were going into the opening ceremony, yeah. there was so much media hype wow. that on opening ceremony day, the moment the Ghana squad came mm -hmm. out, the whole stadium just erupted. Wow. So the stress, you have to learn how to take care of the stress. So you, you do need a team around you that can help you manage that stress. Mm. Now, I, I believe that at the Winter Olympics, you are probably Ghana's only representative. Yes, only one. Just me. Mm -hmm. um, it's been one, 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 like how you get, um, what's it called? Uh, Mr. Frimpong. Akwesi Frimpong, yeah. Akwesi Frimpong, one. Then you have this new chap. Yeah. Only one. If Akwesi Frimpong had not been hit by COVID, yeah. would have had two. Mm -hmm. then the hope is that next time you have three, then four, the then numbers. five, and it starts growing. I mean, that just leads me to ask you, I mean, how well did you do at that Olympics? And how do you think your, your career went overall? In terms of if you, if you did a sit down to evaluate your, your winter sports career, how, how do you think it went overall? I'll, I'll say I think I, I hit all the target markets I wanted. I, I wanted to qualify for the Olympics and show okay. that it can be done. Yeah. It was a, a novelty at that time, but then it exactly. turned serious. Um, during a press conference, I said, they asked me, what position are you going to come? And I said, look, I don't want to be last. Yeah. That was achieved. Yeah. I think I could have skied faster, but my coach told me this. Mm -hmm. There's no point in you falling down because all of us have suffered to get here. If you ski the way you want to ski, mm -hmm. out of 102, yeah. only 54 survived. Wow. And he said, look, the world champion has crashed. So why not just stay inside? Yeah. Don't do your madness. Finish so that we all will be happy. Yeah. So my manager, when I got the bottle, my manager was crying. And I asked him why. He said, oh, he's just happy that we've completed and we can go. But if I'd fallen down, yeah. it would have been a miserable thing. So I think we hit all our target markets. That's what we did. When does a winter athlete decide that it's time to call it quits? I mean, when your body starts telling you it's tired, mm. then also your pocket also starts telling you that <laughs> I'm broke. So you look at those two things. Um, after my Winter Olympics... You didn't have a sponsor then? You didn't no, have a sponsor you, throughout your, 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 your career? When I started, I didn't have sponsors. Okay. When I got the first sponsor, I had the sponsors okay. that coming in. Okay. Yes, you can get sponsors, but to keep sponsors, mm -hmm. you have to work hard. You have to give mm. sponsors a reason to sponsor you. That's what yeah. athletes and sports people do, maybe don't understand in Ghana. It's not just about, oh, come, Coca-Cola will sponsor you. Yeah. No, Coca-Cola wants... What value are you offering them? Yes. Exactly. That value creation is a whole job. You mm. need even like an, an administrative body doing that. And I was doing that. 
So I sleep around 2, 3 in the morning because I'm doing all the sponsorship work for them, doing the web promos. And you're kidding me. Oh, yes. So you're your, own, you're your own marketing manager. Yep. Sort of. I did a lot of the marketing myself. I created events for the sponsors. So that's why some of my sponsors stayed with me for four years. Mm. I still have one sponsor who has sent me a message that they are a lifetime sponsor. Oh, wow. They are not going to ever. Anytime I am... Doing anything concerning... They will come. Wow, that's amazing. You get it? I, I was sponsored by Head for three years. Okay. For Head to sponsor you, you have mm -hmm. to... I'm not world number one. I'm I mean, not even... They are, they are big in the winter sports yes. industry. They sponsor the big nations. Yeah. So for Head to sponsor you, I think my equipment every season from Head mm -hmm. was more than 15,000 euros. Wow. So you look at if they're giving you 15,000 euros worth of equipment, mm -hmm. they need to get something back. And that takes a lot of effort. Hmm. That's, that's, am that's amazing to hear. So at this point, um, how long were you in there for? Seven years of uh, training. Seven years of training. Yes. I mean, your, your career spanned seven years. Seven years. Well, I'll say maybe about eight years. Eight years. Yes. And then you decided that, well, let me just go back to my regular life. Yes. When you were transitioning out of that, did you have an idea of what you were going to do after, after you quit? Yes, um, I had wanted to do lots of talks, inspirational talks, etc. Okay. But I wanted to also do business okay. because my background uh, from my education mm -hmm. is um, I'm a leisure and tourism professional. Yeah. Okay. So I came back to Ghana. I lectured for, I think, over five years okay. of lecturing, uh, management and leisure and tourism management. Uh -huh. But I also quit that because I wanted to focus more on the business side of things. I've always been an industrialist. I like seeing problems and solving them. Mm, mm. Now, at this time where you finished your career off, you are like transitioning back into regular civilian life, if I can put yes, it that way. True. Um, were there some other Ghanaians who had like shown interest in also getting into ice sports? Or yeah. had you made efforts to rope other people in and say, you know what, I've, I've broken that glass ceiling. It's time to give other people the opportunity to dream that black people can actually do this. Yeah. Uh, I tried twice. Mm -hmm. I took two young kids from Britain to okay. Italy. And I think the first two days, yeah. the first one gave up. Wow. The, the whole steepness and the yeah. effort they gave up. The second day, the other one, like, you can't do it too much stress. It, if you are scared of heights, mm -hmm. you're scared not, of it's speed. It's not your thing. Yes. You, you look down the slope and you just go like, you know what? Take me back now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fear factor is, yeah. is massive. Mm -hmm. Then I tried from Ghana, where I got two young people from Ghana. We yeah. did some tests, physical tests, etc. We got them a school in Italy for them to go on yeah. school. We got them accommodation. But we had problems at that time with the sports council. Okay. Somebody wouldn't sign the paperwork. Hmm. So the tickets all went to waste. The insurance wow. went to waste. Everything went to waste. All the accommodation, all the expenditure yeah. from the yeah. sponsors. Because at that time I was sponsored by EasyJet. Okay. So EasyJet was... What was the reason for not sponsoring that? Or not, uh, not signing off on that? Take a while, guess. Uh, I don't know. The I usual... Know. You, you weren't willing to grease certain palms and stuff like that. You see. Interesting thoughts there. Um, talk to me about the likes of Akwesi Frimpong and the new breed of winter athletes we have who are Ghanaians. I mean, are you in touch with them? Do you talk to them? Do you offer them advice what's your relationship like with them? i think i've had some chats with carlos Mader some time back when he was trying to qualify for the olympics so i told him this is the process you can use to qualify okay. i think i have more contact with aquisi Ak frimpong than okay. uh, carlos okay. Mader. and for me it's just great to see them pushing hmm. i think aquisi frimpong is the best we have at the moment yeah. when it comes to anybody in winter sports and his sport, from my point of view, mm -hmm. is super dangerous. Mm -hmm. But he rather tells me that mine is super yeah. dangerous. His own is safer. And I think the likes of us can be the ones to not just inspire mm -hmm. a new generation, yeah. but to actually help them get to places where they can train, etc. Mm. Because we have been through the stress of breaking through, finding out how to do things. Yeah. And one of the reasons I'm doing business at the moment is you need funding mm -hmm. to make things happen. Yeah. So I told myself, do some business, create some entities that can produce money. And using that money, you can fund those little dreams to, to make things happen. Mm. Talking about that, I mean, I, I hope that you haven't given up your efforts in trying to unearth new talent in Ghana. How has that 
I, have you thought about doing that? Have you thought about growing the interest of winter sports or ice sports in Ghana? How would that possibly go in if you have? Well, I, I wanted to build a ski slope in Ghana and I still want to build one. Okay. And to do that, it takes money. Mm. Even to take someone to Italy now, you need a bit of money, even though I can get the sponsors on board. The only way to speed up such a, a transition mm -hmm. is if you get the Olympic body of Ghana, the Sports Council mm -hmm. working with you, okay. then the sponsors see that, okay, you know, sponsors want to see that, okay, if I put some money in now, mm -hmm six, seven years down the line, would yeah. I still be reaping something? Mm -hmm. So if they know that you got a program, yeah. they'll jump on board. Mm -hmm. You know, Aggressive Rimpong is sponsored by a Ghanaian uh, company. Yeah. I think uh, something gas yeah. or so. I was sponsored by a lot of European and foreign mm -hmm. companies. Those guys tend to give you a lot of sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And if they find out that, look, I can easily bring head to sponsor Ghana volleyball team, mm -hmm. provided they see this progression, yeah. you understand? Okay, so where is the Ghana volleyball team going to? Would they go to All African Games? Or from All African well, Games, would they go to next, World Championship? Yeah. The moment you can show them... A progression path, they'll be on board. They'll jump on board. So um, how, how far would that right? ski slope and the, the, the interest? I mean, are you, are, have you made contact with some kids? And even if you're looking at grooming certain youngsters, mm. what sort of demographic are you looking at? For me, when I first uh, tried it out, yeah. we decided that you want to get somebody who is hungry mm. to succeed. Okay. Because I tried in court with the Dadaba type, yeah. and they came up there and were like, oh, no, I'm going back. Yeah, I, so I, I can't do this. this I can't do this. Steep. I don't like heights. It's, it's dangerous. Exactly. Now, sports in Ghana is not treated really as a profession. Mm -hmm. It's like if you couldn't go to school, then you become a yeah. sportsman. I want a situation where if I say I'm choosing two kids, yeah. can you pay them? How much can you pay them? Maybe if you're paying them 3,000 to 5,000 Ghana cities a month, mm -hmm. their parents know that they're earning money. Yeah. It's like now it's a profession, yep. you understand? Yep. They're going to school as well, mm -hmm. and they are doing that. To get there, you, you need money. Yeah. You need to trigger the process, then sponsors come mm -hmm. on board. So it's something that's still in the pipeline but we need to fix some things first. Finance is always the biggest issue, always. Talent, you can find on the streets of Ghana, easily. Hmm. Talent, you can always find. I like that. Talk to us again um, about... I mean, you've touched on it briefly, but talk to us about, let's say, recent contact with the sports industry, the NSA, the sports ministry... How much are they buying into your ideas now, especially since Akwesi Frimpong has also come after you? And, I mean, we've had a, a couple more. How, how much are they buying into the concept now? The, the, the last time I visited the Ghana Olympic um, body, mm -hmm. I was told, why am I hiding myself? I should come on board. And I, I told the guy, frankly, that, look, my experiences with the organization yeah. just show that it's better for me to do things on my own up to a point because... The red tape, the bureaucracy, mm -hmm. is just too much. You get mm. it? Uh, if you look at our performance in sports, yeah. there's always too much controversy around the administration around our sports. Mm -hmm. So a sportsman gets to whatever competition, and your mind is not even on that. Your mind is on quarreling over your per diem and unnecessary stuff. Yeah. But you, you go to other countries like UK, United States, a sportsman on tr on the track or wherever is focused on focused about on the that track, thing. yeah. Not little little quarrels and all that kind of funny thing. Who is going to fly with the person and yeah. all those crazy things? So, at the moment, un unless really somebody from the Ghana Olympic Committee says, "Okay, you know what? We want you to come on board and help us get sponsorship for this, sponsorship for that." I'm kind of just watching sports in Ghana like any other spectator. Hmm. Now, you also did mention that you are sort of into the um, hospitality industry. And we hear that you have some projects that you're, you're working on currently. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Uh, coming back to Ghana, lecturing, I, mean, I, I worked on some projects for some individuals. I've, I've done some work for Starbites. I've done some for Silver Star. And I decided that, you know, create something yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So our first uh, product we are launching is called Inferno. Okay. It's a, a restaurant. 
and we are trying to play on my background of being in snow sports yeah. versus the fire of cooking, okay. etc. So we came up with the, the name Inferno. So the end of this month, mm. we are launching Inferno. It's at North Legon. Okay. Uh, you'll be invited. So you yeah, come, and, come and have a feel of what we, we are doing. We are mostly like what we call meat masters. So we are serving kebabs, burgers, okay. pizzas, and that kind of stuff with a Ghanaian twist okay. on it. So it's going to be a place that we say it's hot yeah. in terms of the food is hot, mm -hmm. so it's spicy. Yeah. And the atmosphere mm -hmm. is also hot in mm. terms of the people are hot people. Mm. Mm. That sounds like an idea. Yeah. Sounds like an idea. Just finally, before we go, um, just advice for sportsmen, especially those who are engaged in sports that isn't given that much prominence. What, what sort of advice would you give them? Uh, I'll say they, they, they need to keep doing what they are doing, but they need to start reaching out to foreign companies. Mm. Um, those companies, are, they understand the return mm. on investment as sponsors. Mm. That is why Coca-Cola pumps so much money into big sporting events. Yep. You know, I think the last time I checked World Cup, Coca-Cola paid, I think, 40 million or 80 million to have the Coca-Cola logo yep. in the center of the... Yep. They, they know what it does. Mm -hmm. I had a sponsor who sponsored me for one year. And the next year, I went like, oh, are you going to sponsor me? Funny enough, they, they're an apple company. They, they, okay. they produce apples, like mm -hmm. farm apples. Mm -hmm. And the owner was like, why won't we sponsor you? Do you know how much money we made out of you wow. last time? You get it. So athletes and sports people mm -hmm. have to have the right management around them. Okay. You've got to have your family also backing you and understanding what you are trying to mm -hmm. achieve. Mm -hmm. With the right manager who is not there to fleece you off money, yeah. you can move forward because they'll point you in the right direction. Let's do this, mm -hmm. let's do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I think sports people have to add a bit of education to what they are doing. So you can stand in front of a government body and you can say what you have to yeah. say. You get it? Yeah. So Kwame has just shared his story with us. It's been inspiring, it's been educative, I'm sure. A lot more people will be uh, inspired to want to get into winter sports. Avail yourself. I'm sure he will want to uh, take you out there, show you uh, what he was able to achieve. And hopefully you can possibly surpass that. The tracker, obviously, always on City TV. Same time next week. We'll see you right here.